In 2025, the cybersecurity job market presents a paradox. On one hand, the global shortage of cybersecurity professionals remains a pressing issue. According to Cybersecurity Ventures, there are 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity positions worldwide, a number that has somehow persisted since 2021. In the US alone, there are nearly 470,000 cybersecurity job openings that were reported between May 2023 and April 2024. And then on the other hand, Specific traditional roles are experiencing a decline. Job postings for security engineers and security analysts have decreased by approximately 25% from 2022 to 2024. This decline is attributed to various factors such as automation, outsourcing, AI, and the evolving nature of cybersecurity threats. But before we get deeper into that, I'm Day, a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon. With five years in cybersecurity, my experience covers detection engineering, cloud security, instant response, threat hunting, and most recently, threat intelligence. Before Amazon, I worked at Datadog as a cloud threat detection engineer, where I researched cloud threats and built detections for various cloud providers and SaaS applications. I've worked my way up from SUC analyst roles, investigating everything from endpoint threats to cloud-based abuse, so I know exactly what it takes to break into this field. I started just like many of you, learning from scratch, asking questions, and just trying to figure it out one step at a time. And now I'm here to help you do the same on this channel. So if you wanna stay up to date on the cybersecurity industry and everything technical and career related, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Also, check out the links below for resources, including our Discord community of over 6,000 members, our newsletter, and our other channels. Now let's dive into the video by first understanding the impact of the elephant in the room, AI on cybersecurity operations. Artificial intelligence or AI is revolutionizing cybersecurity operations. AI systems are now capable of analyzing vast amounts of data, detecting anomalies and responding to threats in real time. Now, the accuracy and actual application of this is very questionable as of now, but we can see very rapid development in how these AI systems are able to do certain things that are previously expected of security analysts or security engineers. I don't think they have or will eventually completely replace them. However, it makes them even more efficient at getting the job done. For instance, some AI systems can process up to hundreds of thousands or millions of signals daily, which significantly enhances threat detection and security analysis capabilities. However, this innovation is a double-edged sword. While it increases efficiency for cybersecurity operations, it also reduces the demand for entry-level roles focused on routine and mundane cybersecurity tasks. Conversely, there's a growing need for professionals who can manage and oversee AI-driven systems, interpret complex data, and have a deep understanding of cyber threats and make informed strategic decisions that the AI systems cannot make. Outsourcing has also become a significant trend in cybersecurity. Organizations are increasingly turning to managed security service providers or MSSPs and SOC as a service providers to handle their security needs. This shift is driven by factors such as cost effectiveness, access to specialized expertise, and the need for 24-7, 365 monitoring. And while outsourcing offers benefits to organizations, it also impacts job opportunities for cybersecurity professionals. There's a growing emphasis on roles that require professionals who can bridge the gap between outsourced services and organizational objectives. Economic pressures are also influencing how organizations allocate resources to cybersecurity. While overall spending on cybersecurity continues to grow, there's a shift towards strategic investments in people, technologies, and services that offer the highest return on investment. And this includes AI-driven solutions, cloud security, and advanced cybersecurity systems. Additionally, international regulatory requirements are becoming more stringent and quite frankly, more expensive, compelling organizations to invest in compliance and risk management. This trend is creating demand for professionals skilled in governance, risk and compliance, PRC, as well as those who can navigate complex regulatory landscapes. As a matter of fact, there's been a substantial increase over the last few years in specialized cybersecurity roles focused on data protection and user privacy, particularly in positions such as privacy engineering, data protection officers, and privacy compliance specialists. We're even starting to see legal professionals being embedded in cybersecurity organizations, especially ones that handle customer data, 
And these roles have become increasingly critical as organizations navigate complex privacy regulations and consumer data protection requirements. So what does all this mean for you? I don't want to be all doom and gloom. You already know that AI is changing the game, but it can't replace real world experience. You can't prompt your way out of a real world incident. You can't chat GPT your way through a active breach when a customer's data is at risk for a publicly traded company. What you need is experience. What you need is reps. What you need is good judgment. And that's exactly why DFIR Labs, the sponsor of this video, stood out to me. Their labs aren't built around sanitized cookie cutter scenarios. They're based on real intrusion cases that are grounded in actual incidents that happened in the wild. You get hands-on access to the kind of chaos that no simulation can really recreate. Ambiguous logs, noisy alerts, subtle lateral movement, and stuff that real attackers do when they're inside your network. And here's why that matters. First, it'll help you to learn how to think like an analyst and a responder and not just follow a checklist. Second, you start to recognize attacker behavior and tradecraft in real telemetry, something that AI is good at, but also something that you should still be good at. And third, you build the pattern matching instincts that AI cannot give you. The platform itself is highly usable, offering options from starting, pausing, and resuming labs at any time. The labs range from easy to hard, with many including guided reports, and there's options for finishing a lab, passing a quiz, and getting CPE credits for it. And for enterprise teams, you even get analytics tied to each phase of the cyber kill chain, which makes it insanely useful for instant response readiness assessments. And just to show you what it looks like, here's a quick snapshot of the lab environment. And here's exactly how you access the lab. You can log in. I'm gonna obviously blur out the username here, but I can go ahead here and go and log in. And now I'm presented with this case, which allows me to access case data in Splunk. We're also given incident time frame, given details about the labs. In here, I can also see the lab details. I can also see the affected hosts. It tells me what host names they are, the IP addresses, the roles, it tells me about the available indices. So I can have a starting point for these different uh, hosts I'm looking at for Windows, for network, for detection signal alerts, uh, for your alerts, for memory events. Um, and then there's also a detection alerts dashboard as well I could take a look at. There's also some basics for Splunk resources here as well, if you're new to using Splunk. And of course, a leaderboard, investigation process, teaching you how to build a timeline and asking investigative questions. This is a really great way to really build those investigative skills, especially with real world data. And then we've got quiz. And this quiz is actually what is going to test against the investigation you're doing. This will lead us back to the portal. And then in here, we can actually answer questions about this particular lab. And here is what the Splunk instance looks like. And you can actually see you're able to query various things here. If we actually just take this out, this is just event code one, and we actually run this, we could probably get more data. So we can see a lot more data here, very packed with a lot of things happening in here. As you can see, about 100,000, 200 of 200,000 events matched. So over 200,000 events and in, in counting here. And we can just dig in, investigate, and find bad stuff. And actually truly learn how attackers behave by looking at a real-world intrusion case within a Splunk environment. Same thing you would decide to use Elastic for this lab. This is what real-world incident training should feel like. Look, if you want to separate yourself from the AI operators out there and actually build battle-tested skills, DFR Labs is where you get the reps that actually matter. A huge thanks to DFR Labs for sponsoring and supporting the channel. It's really great that I'm actually getting to work with DFR Labs on the channel. It's such a full circle moment because when I first started my career, I used to read a lot of the DFR reports that actually translate to some of the labs that you'll be getting here. So these are real-world intrusions from a company that I've been following for like my entire career. So Thanks again for DFR Labs for sponsoring the channel and supporting content like this. Like I said, if you want to get real world experience from real logs, from real threats, from real attacks, definitely go check them out. All right, now let's talk about how to position yourself to win in this new cybersecurity world. The first thing you want to do is embrace continuous learning. This has always been the case. If there's one trait that separates those who thrive and will continue to thrive in cybersecurity from those who will eventually stagnate, it's an unshakable commitment to continuous learning. Cybersecurity isn't just dynamic, it's also volatile. The threat landscape doesn't evolve year to year. It changes by the week, sometimes by the day. New CVs drop, new threat actors emerge, new TTPs, 
cloud platforms update their security models, AI opens doors to both powerful defense tools as well as new classes of adversarial abuse. If you're not constantly sharpening your skills, you're falling behind. But here's the nuance that people miss. Continuous learning isn't just about earning certifications or reading blog posts. That's super important. Yes, but it's not enough. You need friction, you need context, and you need reps. You need some time in the game because cybersecurity isn't just a knowledge game. A lot of times it's a judgment game. AI can do some judgment, but it's not really that good at it yet. You don't just need to know what lateral movement is. You need to recognize when it's buried under tens of thousands of other logs and also how that fits into a threat scenario or into the business context if an attack happens. You need to know when a misconfiguration is just sloppy infrastructural negligence and when it's actually signaling malicious intent from an attacker. And that kind of judgment only comes from working with real world data from real world situations and incidents, which brings me back again to a platform like DFR Labs. They drop you in the middle of a real attack scenario, a breach that actually happened and they let you figure it out. And that's how you build instincts. That's how you learn to investigate under pressure, how to follow leads and tracks and ask better questions and ultimately become the kind of security professional that companies cannot automate away. The second thing is developing cross-functional expertise. You see, a while back, cybersecurity used to live in a silo. You had the network engineering people, the developers, the infrastructure team, and somewhere in a dark corner, the security team that everyone avoided unless something went really, really wrong. But in 2025, that model is completely dead. Today, cybersecurity is both a business enabler and sometimes, a lot of times, a cost center. So if you're not thinking cross-functionally, you're not thinking strategically, gone are the days when your job was just monitoring logs, patching systems, or tweaking firewall rules. That's just table stakes. Organizations now expect security professionals to operate at the intersection of technology, business, risk, and communication. And here's what that means. First, you need to understand how security decisions impact product development. Second, you need to know how an exploited misconfiguration can affect customer trust and potential revenue. Third, you should also be able to explain to an executive why an unpatched vulnerability is not just some random CVSS score number, but could lead to real financial liability. And also, if you're working in the cloud, understanding DevOps, CI/CD pipelines, infrastructure as code, and cloud native architecture isn't just a nice to have, it's some expected baseline fluency. You see, the best cybersecurity engineers I know and I've worked with aren't just technically sharp. They're able to walk into a room of stakeholders from engineering, product, legal, and compliance and explain what's at risk in plain English. They know when to escalate, when to advise, and when to collaborate, as well as when to lead. And let me say this clearly. Being technically brilliant but context blind will always hold you back. You can be super smart, but if you don't have the context to apply that knowledge, it's all not. And with that, you would get overlooked for leadership roles, for strategic projects, and even for the kind of work that really moves the needle. And with that being said, don't get me wrong, cross-functional expertise doesn't mean you have to be an expert in everything. It means you need to build enough breadth to communicate effectively and enough depth to execute your cybersecurity work responsibly. It's about thinking beyond just systems and endpoints. It's about understanding the business and helping protect the entire value chain from the source code to the customer experience. If you can learn that, you become indispensable. The third thing is cultivating soft skills. Let's be real, when most people hear soft skills, they just roll their eyes. Especially in cybersecurity where it's easy to assume that the only thing that matters is how technically sharp that you are. Can you reverse engineer the latest malware? Can you write a detection for the newest attack or TTP? Can you secure infrastructure in the cloud or wherever else? That stuff matters and it's super important. No question asked, full stop. But here's what a lot of early career folks don't realize until it's too late. The further you grow in your cybersecurity career, the more your success depends on your ability to work with people, not tools, not terminals, not tickets, people. You see, soft skills, and I'm talking about the real communication, leadership, and emotional intelligence are what separate good security engineers from the ones who actually lead initiatives, gain trust, and make strategic impact within a cybersecurity organization. Here's what cultivating soft skills actually looks like in our field. One, being able to walk into a tense post-incident review and clearly explain what happened without throwing anyone under the bus. Two, communicating risk to leadership in the language that they understand by translating technical findings into business impact. 
Three, navigating cross-functional friction when the security team is seen as the department of no and flipping that perception by being a partner and a blocker. Four, mentoring junior engineers and analysts, holding your team accountable, knowing how to escalate a threat without creating panic. These are the moments that make or break trust. And trust is an important currency of cybersecurity. If your team doesn't trust you, if your leadership doesn't listen to you, if your partners tune you out, your coworkers tune you out, your technical brilliance will never matter. You will just be ignored or worse, replaced. Now, here's the part that most people underestimate. Soft skills aren't just about external collaboration. It's also about internal regulation. Think about this. Can you stay calm during a high severity incident? Can you manage your time across competing priorities? Can you ask for help before burnout takes over? Can you receive feedback without getting defensive? These are human skills. And cybersecurity, for all the talk about code and exploits and TTPs and zero days, is a deeply human field. We're dealing with threat actors. Guess what they are? Humans. We're protecting people's data. Guess what they are? Humans. We're collaborating across teams. Again, humans. So if you want to go far in this field, not just technically, but as someone others want to work with, then don't just cultivate your knowledge, cultivate your character. That's what creates longevity in your career. That's what builds leadership skills. That's what keeps you relevant in a space that's changing faster than ever. If you found this video valuable, be sure to like and subscribe and check out this video here where I talk about how I got into cloud security in 2025. Or this video where I share my honest advice on starting a cybersecurity career in 2025. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.